Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations in the digital infrastructure industry with leaders. Uh, so I'm here with one of those such leaders, with Omer uh, Wilson, your Chief Marketing Officer of Carbon Technologies, who uh, you know are a very quite new company. You're, yeah. You were just telling me you're coming up on your your one year anniversary or That's birthday. Right. So right. uh, so we'll, we're very excited to chat with you and get the latest with what's going on. So thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah. So um, let's just dive right in. So uh, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, since it is such a new a new company for the folks who uh, don't know uh, Carbon yet, can you tell us a little bit about um, what you all are doing, why you were founded and what your mission is? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great to be with you. So thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Carbon Technologies, uh, very exciting startup, Singapore based, mm -hmm. uh, been around just coming up to a year now, but really looking to transform the data center industry. So, you know, this multi-billion global digital infrastructure industry, um, which is driving everything from AI, cloud, you know, all of the revolutions we've been through. Uh, but, it, but interestingly, some of the layers within the data center infrastructure is still very manual. Uh, and that's where Carbon's coming in. So Carbon Technologies is really looking uh, at its simplest level to automate um, the data center and the customer interface. Mm. Uh, and that's really from an uh, operation perspective. So mm. really the data center about the data center. So mm. any of the ordering going on between data centers and their customers, uh, any of the uh, remote hand access, energy mm. usage, energy data, you know, all, all of this data that goes between uh, users of data centers and the data center operators themselves. That's where Carbon, with its uh, you know automated API la layer, is mm -hmm. looking to really automate that, building incredible efficiencies, and also from an energy reporting perspective, really mm -hmm. transform that in terms of getting real time critical data uh, mm -hmm. for customers around what energy they're using within data centers. So any mm -hmm. of the data that goes between from a, a transactional perspective, uh, that uh, Carbon is looking to build that from its uh, platform layer. Okay, excellent. Yeah, that's a, a great update and overview. And, you know, you're hitting on some of the key topics that we talk to data center operators about all the time, yes. right? Automation, energy reporting. Yes. So definitely some hot topics there. Um, so you could, could you dive a little bit more into the challenges um, related to complexity, cost, security, and observability in data center operations that you all are solving? Yeah, so I mean, we're, you know, as, as we said, we're sort of uh, six months to a year coming up to the year anniversary of the company itself but the area uh, there's a lot of areas that we we will and can focus on but it's really part of the roadmap mm. uh, it's going to be difficult for our size company to solve everything from day one so so the initial release which is called carbon lattice is focusing on cross connect ordering mm. so that's an area which we immediately see especially around network providers telcos uh when they put their content into these large data centers across the globe, uh, the cross-connect ordering process is still very manual. Mm. So there's a lot of issues there around, you know, reconciling bills, making sure the orders are correct. So really the carbon lattice automation layer is, is creating huge efficiencies there on both sides, not just the telcos, but also the data center operators as well. Mm. So they both have different interfaces and different API layers. And, you know, we're translating that between them. So I think that's that's an immediate area we're focusing on. Uh, but then there's so much else, as I said, that comes after that. So, you know, smart hands, uh, remote hand access, um, shipping and inventory access in data centers, mm. uh, and then the whole ESG area, you know, this mm. idea around getting to uh, a scenario where you can have real time data uh, mm. around uh, your temperature, your humidity, you know, what are your servers doing that day uh, for multiple customers uh, between, you know, the DC operator and the customer is going to be hugely valuable, uh, not mm. just for customers, actually, but also reporting up to governments. We're hearing that more and more. They're looking for real time information as mm. AI ramps up, you know, what is the energy usage in the, in these different facilities? How efficiently are you running your, your servers? So that sort of real-time data reporting is something we're going to focus on. And probably the last thing to mention again around what is the the, the problem we're solving is also uh, downtime issues. Mm -hmm. So you hear a lot about downtime issues. And the immediate thing that jumps to mind is that it's more redundancy needed. Well, sometimes it's actually more automation may be needed mm -hmm. to actually know how your servers are running, what sort of backups you've got in different parts of the world. Uh, we look at it m rather than an infrastructure issue, more mm -hmm. as a, around an automa automation and uh, data issue between customers and data center operators. So it's a very critical area if you think of it from that perspective, you know, actually yeah. reducing downtime by having better data around how you're running your uh, servers and equipment. Yeah, I love that. That's a really interesting point. Automation and data as a uh, uh, 
a solution yeah. for for downtime. Um, excellent. So, is there anything else that you'd like to share about um, Carvin's approach uh, to you know tr- the transformation of data centers, really taking the data center industry into a new era? Right. Yeah, I get the you know it's uh, it's always. Um, and I, and I come from a from a data center background and with being in data center oper- from the operate side and now in the startup world, um, it's always been an industry that's very niche. You know, we, mm. we've, I've spent a lot of my last 10 years explaining what a data center is to people. People are getting that even more now because it's mm. so critical, right? right? But from a carbon perspective, the, you know, it's that idea of looking at the operating system for a data center. I think that's mm-hmm. where we're coming into it now from an automation perspective, that as AI makes automation so intrinsic in our daily lives, the data center and their customers who drive everything around AI is within data centers, that needs to become automated, much more automated than it is today. And people don't realize that, you know, the data is hugely automated because it's, it's, you know, algorithms are automating everything, but the actual infrastructure has still has many layers that are manual. So it's really that building an operating system for the data center world and becoming that uh, operating system for DCs and operators and, and their customers. Right. So I think if we had to sum up this conversation in one word, it would probably be that A word, right? Automation. Automation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect. Well, that's a great place for us to, to close out the conversation. But uh, this is really fascinating. And, you know, folks uh, should keep an eye on your space. It's, yes. You know, yeah, as you carbontech.io come up- for any more information uh, on the company. All right. Well, thank you so much, Omer. It's great to chat with you today. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. And thank you to all of our viewers for hanging out with us today at Capacity Europe live on JSA TV. Happy networking.